Just to get us in the right thought. You know how you know that at this time someone isn't hearing from the Spirit of the Most High? A clear telltale sign that they're not hearing from the Spirit of the Most High right now is that they're not telling you that the Most High has turned his back on this world. They're actually telling you to pray for this world. Oh, this disaster is going, it's happening here. Pray for those people. Oh, this thing is going on here. Pray for those people. But the master who these same people say that they serve, he said, I pray for these, which are the elect, but I pray not for the world. And y'all say y'all supposed to be doing just like him, but y'all are actually saying opposite of him. That would be what you call a hypocrite, correct? This same master, was he calling people hypocrites? So then there ain't nothing new under the sun. And do you know why specifically for the time that you're living in right now that there's nothing new under that sun? You know why? Because if you knew the prophecy about the statue of Daniel, gold, silver, bronze, iron, and then iron mixed with miry clay, but the clay and the iron shall not cleave together, if you understood that, then you would know that you ain't doing nothing but living in a loop. Iron already had its time. If you understand the prophecy, then you understand what I'm saying. Iron already had its time. And so now it's trying to have a time mixed with the clay, the iron. Still trying to linger in with their system, with their way of life. So if you want to know how it's going to end for the iron mixed with the clay when that stone crushes it, all you have to do is look back to how did it end for the iron already. And if it ended for the iron already, then what's going to happen for the iron mixed with the clay? So the gold couldn't make it. The silver couldn't make it. The bronze couldn't make it. But the iron think it's going to make it. Even though it's lesser in power, in stature, and in glory than the gold. It's going to somehow survive. Nope. So the time you living in is the iron mixed with the clay, correct? So then why is you praying for it? Why is you lingering on to it? Why are you hey, hanging on to it, thinking that you can get something in it that will last you, that will give you uh, satisfaction or some type of um, inspiration? Y'all still don't understand that all is vanity, it seems. It seems. See, if you don't think that all is vanity, then you ain't wise. Because the one who had all the wisdom is the one who told us that all was vanity. You see? So it's strange when people don't know the time they're living in, they start to make mistakes. They start to live contrary to the time that they're in. Instead of with the time that they're in. And like I told you, if you want to know how it's going to end for you, then think of how did it end for the iron? Well, Abiyah, in his great love for you, gave you a record. It's called Romans. A Roman is that iron. The book of Romans. Well, what do you read in the book of Romans? That Abba gave them up and over to vile affections. Ain't that what you read right there in Romans? They changed the natural use of the man. Men lying with men. They changed the natural use of a woman being with women. Women being with women. Well, ain't that what you see right here? So you, it ain't nothing strange going on then, is it? Ain't that what you see going on right here in this land? Iron mixed with clay? 
clay, a different nation than the iron, but mixed with iron's policies, mixed with the iron's laws, mixed with the iron's way of life, mixed with the iron's diet, mixed with the iron's violent nature, mixed with the iron's bloody nature. If you knew the iron, the Roman, that is, then you know what you've been mixed with. Now, Roman society failed just like all the rest of those societies have fallen, which means your society has fallen. I told you, you ain't in nothing but a loop. It didn't happen before and it don't happen again. It's happening now. The proof that Abba has turned his back on this nation is that they're flying their upside down backwards rainbow flag, like I've been telling y'all. A flag represents who has dominion of that particular thing or location. For instance, American flag is flying, and if you snatch it down, that's a crime called desecration. You see? Because it represents who has the sovereignty there. So when you have a war, and you have a place, and they have a flag, and the opposing forces take over that place, they take that old flag down and they put their flag up, representing they're now taking dominion. Or as that man said in that movie, I'm the captain of the ship now. You hear me? You hear that? So, you're seeing a new flag being hoisted up everywhere. That means something is trying to take dominion. Now the scripture right there in Romans says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie? (laughs) And you see it happening right there in front of you. So just like those people destroyed themselves by their vile affections. Look up that word vile. You don't understand what it means. Just like they destroyed themselves with their own violent affections, what do you think these people are doing here? With their child trafficking, child molestation, parents molesting their own children, raping their own children, fathering offspring to their own daughters' fathers. What do you think that means? What do you think it meant for Sodom and Gomorrah? I told you, you're in nothing but a loop. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? fire and brimstone why because they were given over to their vile affections and lusts hearts burning for one another working that thing that is unseemly just like you see right here in this nation where they show tv shows where men are with men and women are with women working that thing that is unseemly getting in their getting in themselves their just reward and then you see they're putting ads all on tv for medications for hey if you have hiv you can take this medication and you can still have sex and you won't pass the disease on yippee what what you see a wicked and perverse generation that will not be made straight very simple and so they have to receive what is their due reward That's what a punishment is. The father in the house does not like going around spanking his children. Matter of fact, he hates doing that. He doesn't want to do it, but he's willing to do it in order to straighten out his child, to pull his child back. But when that child, hey, says, you know what? He can't be straightened. No matter what I do, no matter how much I send scourges to amend him with pestilence and famines, and recessions and depressions and earthquakes and tornadoes and wars no matter how much i do this to him he won't repent matter of fact he just waxes worse and as you see these things increase in the land anybody who's left who's listening to me today as you look out into the world and you see these things pestilence and famines increasing and fires and Earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars. Have you seen these things increase? Have you also seen that flag increase? Have you also seen that spirit of infiltration increase? It's everywhere now. 
even in schools, trying to entice children over to that side. And is it not true or am I lying? Or is what I'm saying facts? So when a nation gets to that point where they decide that they're going to spit in God's face and change his image into a lie, his truth into a lie, well then he's going to turn his back on you and you're going to receive what you desire. Which is, I don't want God around because I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. Okay, he's going to give you a lawless one. And then you'll be able to do whatever you want to do. But see, you're ignorant and you refuse to accept that. So you don't know what's good for you to do. And that's why you see so many of those destroyed people who transitioned over to one side only to realize that they were what they should have been all along and God was right. And now they want to detransition and cross that fence again and they can't and they're heartbroken and want to kill themselves because they know that they've destroyed themselves, separating themselves from the truth. And if you see people separating themselves from the truth over gender, then what else do you think they're willing to separate themselves to the truth over? From the truth over, excuse me. When the Father's name, if you know what it is, then you know that that's what they're doing. They're changing his image. I am. They're saying they are something that Abba never said that they were. And it's not just about gender. It's about you if you decide to steal in that moment. It's about you if you decide to lie in that moment. It's about you if you decide to have fear in that moment. You've taken that name in vain in that moment. And all of those who were elected out by grace and saved have now been pulled out. And Abba only did it for their sakes. You only give grace because there's something, there's some punishment to give grace for, from, whatever words you need to describe it with. Grace has no purpose if there isn't a punishment, if there isn't something to be saved from. Men's hearts pull to them their fears. What we call suffering and pain is nothing but a person's own fears come upon them. That's all it be. I'll give me one moment. Now I got a question. When you do something, anything, I don't care what it is. When you do something, don't you do it with a end in sight? Before you ever even start it? Don't you have some goal and that's the reason why you're doing it at all? And if there's something that you were asked to do that has no end result, don't you get kind of indignant for being asked? And don't you say things like, I ain't about to do that, man, that's a waste of time. Why would I waste my time doing that if I ain't gonna get nothing out of it? Okay, well that's everything in this world. Y'all don't like that because y'all still got lust in y'all heart. And that's why Abba has turned away from you. The grace was offered and it was offered to those that he had meant it for. And, and now, he, now it's being proven why it was meant for some and not all. Because some just don't want it. They don't believe God's word that says all is vanity. They don't believe that and it's proven by the fact that they chase, they pour energy into I already asked you, do you pour energy into something that has no end result? In other words, there's no win to it. It's just a loss. I'm going to take a loss to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Isn't that what we used to do? When we didn't know no better and we was living in ignorance? Ain't that what we was doing? Okay, I'll give you an example for all those that want to play dumb right now. Let me give y'all an example. When you're young and you're growing up, you go through puberty, you start getting horny, you start getting attracted and wanting to have sex. Now you don't know that if you have a lot of sex with a lot of different people, that that's going to destroy your body, cause STDs, unwanted pregnancies, all kind of stuff. You don't know that those results or those fruits of what you're doing yet. You don't know it. But as you go through life, you start to learn. You say, wait a minute. I had sex with three people this week and now my shit is itching and burning. Girl be like, I got a damn yeast infection. I got a UTI. I didn't have that last week. Well, all the hell of a sudden I got it now because 
He said, don't be fornicating. You didn't understand that. You was ignorant, so you was out there doing it. So now that you know that that's the results of the cause, which is fornication, then you stop the fornication so that you don't get them results. Because like I said, that's what people I thought like doing. Working on things that are going to give them a good benefit. But those people that said, well, damn, that momentary pleasure of that sex with all those different people is so exhilarating. It's so fun. It's so this. What you're actually saying is it's valuable. God says it's vanity. You're proving you don't believe God, nor did you listen to him. So then don't get mad when you get what you get. <laughs> don't be cussing out my God when he give you exactly what you're asking for. Now, if you believe his word, then you believe that this world done for. That those who labor, labor in vain. It's the same thing I was asking you when I said, that what you're doing. Is it going to give you a payout in the end? Well, God says those who labor, labor in vain, and it's all vanity. So the answer to that would be, nope, it ain't going to give me nothing. And that's going to be the problem and the heartbreak for a whole lot of people. A whole lot of y'all are going to get hurt by things snatched out of your life suddenly that you thought was something. It ain't nothing. It's vanity. It's actually nothing. But you don't believe that. <laughs> you refuse to believe the truth, as God said. You love lies more than you love the truth. And that could be a woman you so-called love. You love the idea of her more than what she actually is. Okay, then let's break it down. If you saw a beautiful woman, and this woman was fucking gorgeous to you. She had everything that you desired. Okay, she's perfect in your eyes. Now, that was outwardly. She was. She was wearing a disguise the whole time. You didn't know what she actually was, which was a... Let's see. What is the woman actually? She's an, an insect of some sort. A praying mantis. Yeah, we'll use that. She's a praying mantis, actually. Now, if you know about praying mantises, then you know that if the male lays with the female, the female eats the male afterwards. But you don't know that that's what she is. So you're all in love and all enamored with her and caught all into this illusion that she's put in your brain. That she's a woman when she's actually not at all. That's a lot of you. And y'all laugh and y'all think it's not real. I'm looking right at her. It's clearly a woman. I was said, there's people standing there that look like they're white sepulchers. There's people standing there that outwardly appear righteous but inside are ravenous wolves. So you want to get on my ass because I'm telling you that that woman is a damn praying man. to go eat your ass. Y'all think I'm tripping and telling you lies. <laughs> you shall soon see how vanity it all is. Every fucking thing you do. Yeah, I got to say it like that so I can get you to pay attention and drop your fork. Eat that damn spaghetti your ass eating. Put the fork down and pay attention. Because this is it, y'all. You shovel your driveway because it snowed. You get it all clear, you all aching and nose running and shit. You go in the house feeling all accomplished. Yes, honey, don't worry about it. You can drive your car right out when you leave for work. I shovel that damn thing. 15 minutes and shit back full again. Stupid nigga, it's vanity. You go, you cut your hair. It's sweet as hell. Haircut is fucking perfect. You're looking good as hell walking around like Johnny Bravo and shit. Talking about hoo, hoo, ha, hoo, hoo, posing and shit. Three days later, your shit look fucked up again. Daddy. You go to the gym, you work out, you get strong as hell, you got the most perfect body, standing up there looking like a Greek god and shit, standing there all looking like an Adonis. Yeah, hell yeah, everybody look at me. Five months later, you, you get an injury, five months later, you, you're looking like skin and bones. Yeah, it was vanity, all that work, sweating and injuring your damn self for nothing. Vanity! Another nigga, he bought up a whole bunch of property, he got into real estate and bought up a whole bunch of houses and everything and did a whole bunch of shit. Found out he had, or he was on land. He bought all that property on land that was fucking fucked up. Had poisonous shit on that land. <laughs> oh shit, damn. Oh, vanity. Vanity, 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 vanity. You build up, you build up a business. You build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. You find out you're this some illegal shit. Oh shit, you get that shit taken from you. Damn, you're a drug dealer. You get a bunch of drugs. You sell up a whole bunch of drugs. You make $200 million. You look like Big Meech now, sitting in jail for 30 years. Vanity. 
you fly all the way to fucking Vietnam to steal fucking drugs over there during the war, and then you fly it in caskets, defiling people's memories, putting drugs in the caskets, putting that shit all the way over America to bring that shit over here like Frank Lucas making a million dollars a day, and you end up in jail, you sit in a wheelchair, can't even talk. Vanity! Uh-huh. It ain't man about nothing else. Oh, by the way, in Romans, it says there, not by works that we have done, but by his mercy and grace. Like I keep telling you, this world is so destroyed that everybody in it is fucked up. And the only way that you'll come out of it is by grace and mercy. And yet you have many people unwilling to fall on their knees and say that they need grace and mercy today. I can earn it. I can earn my spot. His word, well, your ass is rebellious and don't fucking believe nothing he say. So why am I surprised that your ass is sitting up here arguing with me about what you can do to be saved? Um, your good works are as filthy rags. So you tell me what good thing you can do. Hmm. <clears throat> It's all about what he can do, bitch. And y'all ain't submitted to that. Simple. So I treat y'all like what you is. Vanity. I just tell you niggas the truth. Now y'all tell me, who likes to hear the truth? Or have there been songs written about it? Have there been people that made messages about it? That the truth hurts. So then if you like me and you don't do nothing but speak the truth because I've told your ass don't lie and so you decide to be peculiar and stop being like the world because all the fuck they do is lie, you start telling the truth, then do you think they're going to like you? Well, you're not surprised that they don't like you. And his word says very eloquently and plainly, marvel not, my son, and why? It's winter time. It's snow all over the ground. Y'all probably can't see it. It's snow all over. It's cold as ever out here and I'm hollering <laughs> talking loud and bold so I'm peculiar I'm peculiar the only reason I'm opening my mouth right now is because I was said to do it all the days before now he was saying don't do it don't say nothing to them niggas see they think it's strange I talk like this I'm peculiar bitch I'm different than you niggas I'm passionate about the things that y'all are not passionate about so then I'm going to look different than you. I honor the things that y'all dishonor. I hold in high esteem the things that y'all cast behind y'all back as nothing. Everlasting riches that do not decay. And y'all don't seem to understand that. So I'll be done with y'all stupid asses. He's going to give you exactly what you want. And if you, if you want what he's about to give you... <gasps> Which ain't nothing but death, because it's already written. The wages of sin is what? But they love the wages of unrighteousness. It's already written. See what I'm telling you? They love that. So of course, yeah, you strange when you don't like unrighteousness, when you hate it. And the only reason that you know what unrighteousness is, is because Abba revealed it to you by grace. You actually didn't know. <laughs> you thought works were righteousness. I'm going to church on Sunday. I've been going every Sunday for the last six months. I'm a good guy. That's right, I'm a good, solid Christian. I went, I also was handing out the communion at church. I'm really in there, God. I'm really doing what you asked me to do. Next, what else did I do? I saw an old lady when I went to my job. She was there on the side of the road, looked homeless. I gave her my sandwich from my lunch bag. So now God has really put me in heaven. I probably got a high rise there now. That ain't how it worked, little buddy. That ain't how it worked. You can't earn it. You can't earn it. That's why he said don't be like them hypocrites blowing a trumpet every time you do something. And these niggas can't help but do it. They get right on there and start telling all you niggas about what's going on in their personal life. <laughs> hey y'all, I just had to get on live right now. Some devastating ass news. Yes, I, I lost my son today. 
I had to get on here and just get some support. Are you fucking kidding me? That's the first thing you decide to do when you find out that your child is dead. This is how this world operates. They think that's valuable. When people say, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry, condolences. <laughs> what? What? See? You see? Foolishness, outward appearance. <laughs> as soon as you leave, ah. Uh, I, I was tired of doing that shit. I'm glad that nigga left. I was tired of acting. Yeah, and so am I. So the fuck are we over here on the elect side? We're tired. Read the Bible and see if we ain't tired of you niggas. It says multitudes is screaming at the throne of Abba Yah saying, How long before you judge them niggas? Y'all just don't know it. So they all think it's strange when I say it, just like they saying it. Well, they said in the Bible, and they're calling out to God saying, How long before you judge them? But there's nobody on earth that's going to be saying that like that. Okay, well then who are them niggas? It tells you right there who they is. Those who came out of great tribulation. Yeah, living amongst murderers, thieves, backbiters, it says. Men shall wax worse and worse, it says. So then what are you praying for them for? If they're only going to get worse, he already told you that. Let's pray that the brother gets better. He won't. I'm here to tell you, stupid ass. He ain't going to get better. So what are you doing? Wasting. See? Vanity. Wasting. Instead of laboring in the kingdom of life. How do we know this is true? Yahusha, let me go back and bury my father. Let the dead bury their dead. You come and follow me. And I will give everlasting life to whom I will. <sighs> but like I said, I guess y'all don't know that. So, oh well, hell. <laughs> Good luck to you. When all your fears come upon you, you know, it's pretty hard for all your fears to come upon you when you don't have any fear. Oh my God, grandson, that's not possible. Okay, well, the Bible says perfect love cast out fear. Be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So that's how I can walk around without fear doing what I'm doing right now. Why you niggas is not doing it. <laughs> Why you're not doing it. And I hope that when I talk to you niggas, I provoke you bitches to jealousy. I hope I do, and I hope that you hate it and don't like it. Because that's the purpose of why I'm talking to your ass. It's to let you know how you're fucked up. It's to let you know who you rejected. It's to let you know who you hated. It's to let you know what words that you rejected and why the things that's coming upon you is coming upon all you niggas. Falling down dead in droves. Dying, losing loved ones, losing properties, losing things that are vanity that you thought were value. But you would not listen to the master who told you to come out of her, my people. That you be not partaker. You stayed in there. And you became a partaker. So all of you niggas partake and drink that cup to the full. Siluam Israela.